Hi, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, Sue Dengenis, I'm the Director of Marketing for Synchro Software, and this morning's webinar is on Synchro Pro um, Navisworks workflow. Uh, it's being presented by Greg Demchak, who is in our Boston office. He's the Director of Product Management. And just a couple quick notes. Um, these are all recorded and you can access them from our YouTube channel, but I will send a link to everyone who's registered and we encourage you to submit questions throughout the webinar. So we'll get to as many as possible after Greg finishes his presentation and if we can't get to your questions, um, we will follow up with you uh, via email or phone call um, to ensure you get answers to your questions. So uh, we'll get started. We will only take 15 minutes and thanks again for joining us, everybody. Here's Greg. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, as Sue said, this is Greg Demchak, uh, Director of Product uh, Management. Um, what I want to talk to everyone today about is um, the plugins that we offer, uh, specifically around Navisworks uh, and Revit, and how that sort of workflow um, works on getting data into Synchro and, and sort of how to synchronize uh, from that. Um, so the first thing, uh, in case people aren't, to realize, uh, aren't aware, if you go up to the support and downloads page on our home site um, and the downloads link, uh, in addition to updates to our software, uh, we have access to Navisworks plugins and the Revit plugins. Uh, these two work quite well together. Um, Manage 2016 is the 64-bit. We also have Manage uh, 2015. Um, so that's the first thing you'll want to do is download um, the latest version of the plugin. And, and they are free and they install right on top of uh, Navisworks and, and Revit. So I just want to show a Revit Navis Synchro workflow here. I'm going to launch into what is uh, Revit 2016. And again, in the interest of keeping this quick and easy in 15 minutes, I'm just going to draw a couple walls in my Revit file, and I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to come up here. Uh, actually, I don't even use, need to export out of Synchro. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is link this Revit model right into, into Navisworks. So I'm going to go into Navisworks, and I'm going to append this project, which is I call my project. So I'm bringing in the Revit file now directly into Navis, uh, which could be quite typical. You could have um, all sorts of Revit content or models loaded into, uh, into Navisworks. Okay, so I got my walls. Um, now, after you've installed the Revit or the Navisworks plugin, what you'll see up here in the tabbed interface in Navisworks is it says Export Add-ins One, um, and there's two buttons here that are specific to Synchro. One is the plugin settings, which you'll want to check. Um, I'm going to build resources automatically here. Um, I'm going to optimize for synchronization and generate IDs for objects here. Um, if you want, you can also export uh, the properties of elements if you need to generate user fields in Synchro. Um, if you don't have any need for the user fields in Synchro, uh, I would suggest unchecking that. It will reduce the file size um, of your Synchro file. Um, but if you do need to get access to properties, um, you can always do that. Okay, um, then I'm going to go ahead and just export this SPX. I'm going to overwrite this one. Okay, so now I've created a, an SPX file. This is a data transfer file um, that is a synchro-oriented file that we export out of Navis and Revit. And I'm going to come in here with a new file. So now I am in synchro. I'm going to import a synchro project. That's how you get these SPX files in, and that's the Navis, hit next, and import everything. All right, so now we have, these are the walls that were from Revit into Navis, now into Synchro. And these look like they all merged. Let me just check something here. 
Okay, so without exploding objects, these got merged into one, one resource. So I'm going to re-export this. So if you do notice that objects are merging or combining in ways that you may not expect, this explode objects will break things down into a finer level grain. Synchronize. I'm back in synchro. I'm going to synchronize from that export. And now you can see I've got individual components. So I'm going to go ahead and create some tasks uh, for each element and just sequence these. just so we can see, so each of these walls goes in in a sort of order. Okay, so that's, that's good. Now, to synchronize this data, um, there's some important uh, information I want everyone to become aware of. From the way this works, basically, is from Navisworks, um, if you check on the properties of each element here, what we do with this plugin is actually write a synchro unique identifier into each element. Okay, so that happened at the time of export. So this is um, critically important here. We need to, um, without saving, this information would be lost. But synchro will use this um, to do synchronization. Uh, and just watch out. I've seen people do this where they'll open the Navis to an export um, and then just close down the Navis works file. So it's important that you hit save on the Navis works file so that you capture the synchro ID into the file itself. Um, it's just an important step. If you forget that and you just close Navis, um, synchro won't know how to synchronize the data. So just be aware of that. After you export, always hit save on the Navis works file. Okay, so I'm going to go back into Revit and just capture a couple changes here. I'm going to change the geometry just so we kind of see that the model is going to be uh, modified, design change, and I'm just going to hit save. I'm saving the Revit file here. Okay, and then in Navis, uh, the, the way synchronization works in Navis is essentially this uh, refresh tool. We're just looking back to that Revit file and it's going to update the geometry. So now we see this is the updated geometry from Revit, and you see here we still have the synchro ID, so that's that's how this is going to work. I'm going to come back to our plugin tool and export back out. To the SPX file and from the external data tab in synchro, I'm going to right click synchronize from. Uh, this remembers, uh, Synchro just remembers the last path, so I'm going to hit next and bring everything in. And you can tell because the objects are not visible, they, they maintain their task assignment. Alright, so um, that's that's basically it. That's the Navis workflow. Uh, workflow. I'd say the most important thing to keep in mind, and I mention this because I, I have seen a couple clients forget to do this, is the hit save here, um, and just be aware of this uh, data that's written into the Navis works file. Um, and I guess that's that. I can start to answer some questions. Like another thing I want to mention is, and we're going to be publishing this up on the the website soon is uh, we just did came come out with a, uh, a release hotfix for Synchro and this is version 5.123 so if you come up to help and do a check for updates and if you're running 5.114 uh, this will show uh, this should prompt you to go download the latest uh, hotfix um,
And with that, I'm going to get to some of the questions we've got here. Um, so the first question is, any tips on keeping file sizes down? My export SPX file now is almost 800 megabytes. Um, yeah, a couple things. If you're coming out of Navisworks, if you exclude those properties, you'll see a significant uh, reduction in file size um, because we do write every single parameter uh, into the SPX files user fields. Um, the same thing from Revit. Uh, Revit's a little bit more flexible in the, the export settings. Uh, you can specify which parameters you want to export. So if you're only interested in a few, uh, that will also help. Um, it says the update um, from Navisworks to Singer could also be achieved directly um, from Revit. Uh, that is true. Uh, we could have done the same kind of workflow um, from Revit. Um, but I guess what I wanted to show is if you had uh, multiple files coming in, like a structural model, a Revit model, uh, Federating inside of Navis works. Um, this is how you would um, you could work with that. I kept the demo kind of conceptual just to show how synchronization works, but it'll work on any element. Um, another question here: um, Does Navis support the texture map transfer? Um, unfortunately, the answer to that is no. This is an issue that we have um, with the Autodesk Materials Library and uh, API access to texture maps. Um, so texture maps currently do not come out through SPX. Um, next question. What 3D Revit view comes into Navisworks? Can you specify the view? Okay, so this is a good question. Um, in both, for both exporters from Revit and Navis, it's a what you see is what you get um, export. So if it's visible in the view, um, that's what's going to go out. Um, with one caveat, let me just show you. If you, I mean, in Navis here, if you choose to export hidden 3D objects, it will export things that you will have hidden in the view. Otherwise, it will respect um, that whatever is visible and not visible in your active viewport. So whatever is your active view on export is what we shoot out. Uh, let's see here. Next question. Synchro has a collabor collaboration tool on the cloud, something like BIM server. Uh, it's a sort of a side issue. Um, I can say we do have a product called Synchro Workgroup, which allows uh, multi-user collaboration in real time. Um, and it's, the file can be hosted on a network, on an Amazon web server, and uh, you access that file over a network and basically operate on a local file that interacts with uh, a central um, work, work group file. Uh, let's see, if you have a 3D view uh, named Navisworks in Revit, that is a view that Navisworks will put when the Revit file is appended. I'm not sure if that's a question or not. Maybe you could get some more, give me a little bit more clarification on that one. Uh, what about properties? Does it work like IFC? What about custom parameters allocated to Revit elements? Do we have that information back in Synchro? And yeah, the answer is yes. Um, <clears throat> in Revit, um, well, if you export out of Revit directly, you can export all properties or um, specific properties from Navisworks. I think I covered this. If you choose this option to export properties, it'll push out all the parameters. And that includes any custom instance or type parameters you might have assigned to elements in Revit. Let's see, next question. If bringing in a Navisworks file with multiple files transformed to different locations, will, will Synchro keep all the files in the same location as shown in Navisworks? Uh, and the answer is yes, it will preserve the locations of files. Um, so if you've gone through the effort of, of organizing your files and federating them in Navisworks, all those locations will preser be preserved when you export them out to SPX. 
Um, and also, uh, just on that subject, if you are going through just the uh, Revit plugin, and you have a bunch of files linked in and using shared coordinates on the export settings option, you want to make sure you've got use shared coordinates, and that will uh, preserve those local locations. Okay, let's see. Oh, question is, if I have linked files in Revit, will all that information pass uh, into Navis and into Synchro? And the answer is uh, yes. Um, and if you have linked files in Revit, you can also just export that directly out of um, Revit and get that into Synchro. Um, and we are at 11.16, so I'm a, a one minute past my allotted time. But I do appreciate uh, your time this morning. And if you guys have further questions, feel free to uh, reach out to me um, directly at greg.demchak at synchroltd.com. Or you can hit us at any time with support at synchroltd.com. And one of our 40 uh, expert specialists will be able to help you out um, in short order. All right, so I appreciate your time. I hope that was useful, and uh, have a good Friday. Thank you.